Today for Mousetrap Monday, I'm going to show you step by step how to make a traditional style rat trap from New Zealand. Now it's known by a couple different names, including the portable rat trap, the funnel trap covered with bark, or a name I'm not even going to try to pronounce. You want to learn more about this trap? Google this name. It works with a bent stick pulling up a noose. There's a funnel down here with bait in it. The rat will stick his head through the noose, but it's faced with a string. It will chew through the string to get the bait, which is holding down the stick. And when it does, it goes up and the noose catches the rat. Now I'm going to set up the motion cameras and try to catch some rats with this trap. But first I'll show you step by step how to build it. Now before I can start our project, I first need to make a few basic tools. And I'm going to make those tools out of natural materials using ancient Stone Age technology. What I have here is a rock. Well actually, it's natural volcanic glass known as obsidian. I collected this in the deserts of South Central Oregon. And obsidian's known for making the sharpest blades in the world, far sharper than any surgical scalpel. For thousands of years, people have been making tools out of obsidian, including arrowheads, spear heads, knife blades, atlatl darts, drills, and scrapers. And to make those things, they use a technique known as flint napping. The basic tools for flint napping are a hammer stone. This is a river cobble. I'm going to strike the rock and break it in a very controlled manner. And a deer antler tool. This is an antler billet. We'll be able to take flakes with this. And finally, an antler tine. We'll do some pressure flaking. Now before you break into a rock, make sure you protect your eyes. Pieces of glass go flying everywhere. Now to start, I'm going to hold the rock against my knee and hit it with a hammerstone right here. That should go down this ridge. This obsidian is known as black butter. We'll save all these flakes. Look how sharp this is. Right through leather. So nothing too fancy, just a couple really sharp blades to make our trap. I'm also going to make a drill. Take a nice big piece. Here's a beautiful flake we struck off. I'm going to use the antler to make the drill. At this point I have a really nice biface. I can make an arrowhead from this, but instead I'm going to make a drill. So we have our drill and several blades. Let's go start making our trap. Next I'm going to collect some inner bark from a dead tree. This is almost like paper. Just peel it up. There we go. We'll get a bunch of big strips. We're now ready to make the cordage or basically a bunch of string for our trap. We need it to make the noose and to wrap the trap together. And I'm going to make it out of natural plant fibers. These are flax. I grew them in the garden and they're some of the strongest fibers around. To harvest them, you break the base and pull them up. They grow on the outside of the stalk. And these are pretty long, but also strong. I have a big bundle here. I'll just keep stripping these off. And this should be enough for a project. We'll start by taking our fibers and wrapping the ends till they form a loop and twist back on themselves. There'll be two tails, one right here and one right here. Continue twisting in the same direction. Then they lock into place. That's how you make cordage. You can get going pretty fast on this. Now these fibers are pretty long, but eventually we're going to run out. Before we do that, we add new fibers in there. 
Just lay them in with the old fibers and twist. Now you can make your cordage as long as you want. I've been doing this for a little while and we have quite a bit of cordage, probably about 10 feet. The next item we need for our trap is a very special stick. It needs to be strong and springy enough that will pull up the noose and catch the rat, but it also needs to be flexible. We're nearly going to bend it in half without it breaking. Now my first choice would be bamboo, but it doesn't grow around here. Instead, we're going to use a native plant called Ocean Spray. It has a white fluffy flower and there's a bunch growing behind me. The sticks are very strong and springy. I use them to make arrows, so let's take our obsidian flake and go cut some sticks. Now I'm going to try to bend this stick nearly in half, but I'm concerned it might break right here. So I'm going to reinforce it by wrapping it with our cordage. That should make it much stronger and less likely to break. Now I'm going to split this stick in half, but only the bottom part. So I'm going to wrap it right here. With the base of the trap all split, I now need to use our drill to make some holes in the top. Well my drill's a little shorter but I finished the two holes, the front ones for the noose and the back ones for the trigger string. Right here at the split, I added a stick that holds the V apart and I reinforced it with fiber. Now on the bend, this is going to want to break, so I wrapped it even better. The next step is to make a loop in the front. To do that, I have a flexible stick. Then we can add the bark. The trap's now starting to take shape. The rat will enter through here, stick his head through the noose, and want to get the bait behind the string. It'll bite through this and the noose will go up. Now we don't want the rat coming in from the side, so we're going to cover it with bark. With the bark attached, we're going to pull down the spring stick and then tie it down with the trigger string. Now we can dress the noose to cover the opening. The rat will want the bait in the back of the trap, go inside, chew through the string, and when it does, we got it. Now I'm curious if this trap actually works. Let's go set it up in the chicken coop with motion cameras and see if we can get a real rat with a New Zealand portable rat trap. Well here's what I found when I went to go check the trap this morning. It's completely tore apart. Looking back at the motion camera footage, the first thing I noticed is we have a rat problem. So many rats came and took the bait. And eventually one rat went inside, chewed the string, and got caught. But it looked like another rat came along, chewed through the string, and let the rat go. The biggest flaw with this trap is finding the right stick that can bend and be springy enough. But it was fun to build this trap, at least we have an idea of how it worked. And I just bought a really cool rat trap that should catch a ton of these rats in the chicken coop. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right there. I've posted over 500 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday and Friday. So if you want to see how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.